The secrets of the sacroiliac joint. Why does my sacroiliac joint hurt? The sacroiliac joint is frequently overlooked as an important cause of low back pain in about 22% of the cases. It is present in about 40% of all low back pain patients that had spinal fusion. So what is the sacroiliac joint? This is the spine. This is the sacrum, which is the lower part of the spine. The pelvis is connected to the spine through the sacroiliac joints. Why is this connection important? Because the sacroiliac joint transfers the force and the load from the spine to the legs. The sacroiliac joint have very little movement. You don't want a lot of movement. The sacroiliac joint motion is limited to less than 4 degree of rotation and about 1.6 millimeter of translation. So the sacroiliac joint has very little movement. The cause of the pain in the SI joint cannot be this little movement. Some people think it is neuroplasticity when the nervous system is very sensitive to any movement and the ligaments around the sacroiliac joint is full of nerve fibers. Neuroplasticity is rewiring of the nervous system in response to injury to function differently than before. It is a maladaptive reorganization of the nervous system to a painful site, which can be resolved with treatment. In general, the cause of the pain is usually difficult to determine. So for the sacroiliac joint to function, the sacroiliac joint is protected by strong ligaments that prevent shear forces, and it is surrounded by strong muscles for stabilization during movement. The causes of the SI joint problems are several. Pain from different sources overlap. The sacroiliac joint, the lumbar spine, and the hip share the same pain. Pain may be associated with one of these areas or all of these areas. In fact, more than one source of pain may exist. So the diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction can be challenging, and the patient will go through a battery of steps, including injection, with greater than 75% reduction in pain. The cause of the pain is usually idiopathic, and multiple risk factors exist. Usually, the idiopathic sacroiliac joint dysfunction will not show up on the X-ray or MRI or CT. In fact, up to 25% of asymptomatic patients over 50 years old will have abnormal sacroiliac joints and X-rays. So what are the risk factors or the causes of sacroiliac joint pain? The important risk factor is previous lumbar fusion, especially when there is more than three levels involved, similar to adjacent segment disease. So if the spine is fused, maybe the sacroiliac joint will move more and becomes painful. Pregnancy can cause sacroiliac joint pain. Previous trauma to the pelvis can cause SI joint pain. 80% of the patients have a history of a specific trauma, usually a twisting injury. And getting bone graft from the pelvis and violating the sacroiliac joint. Always obtain a detailed history of trauma, infection, inflammatory disease, such as ankylosing spondylitis, writers, psoriasis check for spinal fusion, scoliosis, and leg length discrepancy. 
When you examine the patient, the pain is usually not in the midline. The pain is usually to the side. The pain will be below the L5 level. How do you know that? Look at that pelvis. This is the level of the iliac crest, and this line corresponds to the L4 level. The pain will be below the L5 level. Only 4% of all patients have pain above L5. Usually, the sacroiliac joint pain is just inferior to the posterior superior iliac spine. So how do you find this out? By asking the patient, where does it hurt? And the typical response of the patient will say it hurts right here. Patient with sacroiliac joint pain will point directly at the posterior superior iliac spine or just below it and medial to it. The pain is usually inferior to the posterior superior iliac spine. The patient with the sacroiliac joint dysfunction will have low back pain and the pain radiates into the buttock and down the thigh. Patient will complain of pain during sitting with weight on the affected side. Pain with the stepping up or going upstairs. Pain even with lying in bed. Difficulty with sleeping or changing position. Pain with putting pressure and loading this joint. If you take the pressure off the joint, the patient will feel better. The symptoms sometimes can be similar to a herniated disc or a compressed nerve. And because there are a lot of nerves that run around the sacroiliac joint, the patient can present with sciatica-like pain, with the pain running down the thigh or even beyond the knee. Patient may have groin pain. So you need to exclude hip arthritis, trochanteric bursitis, hip impingement. You want to know if the sacroiliac joint is the predominant pain generator or not. When you ask where the pain is located and the patient points with the finger just inferior to the posterior inferior iliac spine, this makes you have the idea that the pain is probably due to the sacroiliac joint, and that is called the Fortin finger test. And you're gonna start multiple exam maneuvers and the special test to narrow the diagnosis to the sacroiliac joint. And you need three positive tests, and you got to warn the patient that this test will cause pain. Three or more positive provocative physical exam tests all will help to support the diagnosis. And these are the Faber test, compression test, sacral thrust test, Ganslin test, sacroiliac joint distraction test, and the thigh thrust test. The two important tests are marked here, which is the compression test and the thigh thrust test. No single test has 100% diagnostic accuracy. In addition to these provocative tests, you will do a straight leg raise and neurological exam to exclude disc herniation, and you will do hip exam to exclude hip diseases. Straight leg raise test is usually negative. Treatment of sacroiliac joint usually non-operative treatment including anti-inflammatory medication, physiotherapy, and pelvic belt. You try to do at least four weeks of non-operative treatment before you're doing the injection. In low back pain patients, if you suspect the sacroiliac joint to be the cause or the main pain generator, then you need to identify the area of pain exactly and precisely. And that will be done by a diagnostic injection to confirm the diagnosis. The injection might give 60% success rate in pain relief at six months. If you have more than 75% reduction 
of the circular joint pain following a single injection, that means the source of pain is the circular joint. You have to do it under fluoroscopy or under ultrasound. If you do it blind, only 22% of the needles will be in the sacroiliac joint. The injection can be diagnostic and therapeutic, but don't give more than three injections in six months or four in one year. Then radiofrequency ablation, it targets the lateral branches of the sacral nerve roots, but it's unable to denervate the anterior neural structures of the sacroiliac joint. Fusion is minimally invasive. You got to have confirmation that the pain comes from the SI joint, that the sacroiliac joint is the primary pain generator, and you got to have poor response from non-operative treatment. The procedure can be done minimally invasive and as an outpatient. The results have a better outcome compared to conservative treatment. The arthrodesis is a good option for a patient with confirmed sacroiliac joint dysfunction and poor response to non-operative treatment. Sacroiliac joint dysfunction is a disabling problem. The quality of life of a patient with sacroiliac joint problems is equivalent to a patient who has hip or knee arthritis and more affected than the patient who had chronic obstructive lung disease. Most of the treatment for sacroiliac joints is a conservative treatment and surgery is rarely needed.